What is going on everybody? Hope you guys are all doing well. I am back with another pickups video. I haven't done a pickups video in about two months, so I'd say this is like my springtime pickups video, but we have quite a few pieces to get into, so I'm just gonna get it started. I'm going to start off with this bag, which is actually from my brand, which used to be Bummer, and is now Ordinary Practice. I will get more into that in another video, but this is the first product I'm releasing for that new brand. It's basically like an everyday carry type of bag. You can either wear it as like a tote, a shoulder bag, or you can adjust the straps to fit it more like a purse. It is made out of an 100% leather, genuine leather, not vegan leather. Features this highly adjustable strap on either side. YKK zippers. One of my favorite parts about this bag is this really long tassel. It just makes opening the bag really easy. On the inside, there is one open face pocket and one zipper pocket for more valuable items. This bag has been great to me so far since I've been using it. I'm actually really excited to get this released. This bag will be dropping at the beginning or middle of May. If you want to keep up to date with my release, either go follow me on Instagram or follow the brand on Instagram. But yeah, this bag has really been a great everyday bag for me. Next up, we have this pleated bag from Simple Project Lab. <laughs> there is a lot to unpack about this. For one, the material is very interesting. It's essentially a polyester, but there is also metal rods in the fabric. When you see this in person, it almost looks reflective, almost like the surface has this very deep, basically metal finish and it's really unique. It features this zipper pocket that you can fit just smaller items in. Along with being just a very interesting looking bag, the straps of the bag are sleeves like from a formal fitting shirt. I was really confused why they'd use something like cuffs for like how to attach it to yourself, but it allows you to wear this in so many different ways. So unlike typical bags where you can wear it like a shoulder, like a tote bag, you can actually wrap this around your waist and it looks like there's almost just a t-shirt that you took off and you wrapped it around your waist, but it's just the bag. You can wear it like a fanny pack and it doesn't look weird. It, do it doesn't look like, it. it's like redefining the fanny pack. I will say the pocket, the pocket on this is lacking. There is a lot of room, like I can fit my whole arm in here, but the opening itself is only about eight inches it seems, so any sort of laptop or anything like that probably won't fit, but something like an iPad would fit just fine. You can see these three huge pleats on the side, which gives it this almost armor effect. This game kind of just reminds me of like a real life, like Fortnite back bling. I was looking for a smaller carrying bag, so if I ever want to just carry around a few things, that is what this bag will be doing. Last on the list, we have this Mutimer cowhide belt, and there's really not much to say, but since it is literally made out of a cowhide, look how it just has like a shape of its own, really. Extremely thick, not very pliable. It has some nice silver hardware, and of course the cowhide pattern is all along it. But I'd say it's just more of a traditional style belt just made out of this cowhide. It's just a tad too big for me, so I am gonna have to make another hole in it, but other than that, it's a good belt. Next up, we have these Aphex Works contractor pants. I believe that's what their name is. I just did my wardrobe reset and one like category of fashion that I'm really interested in is like more tech wear like Kiko Kostadinov and well, of course, Aphex Works. These were from their spring summer 2024 collection and I really was looking for a pair of adjusting pants. These feature these snap buttons, one on the knee and one on the cuff. These are more of a baggy fit, but when you put the snaps in, they turn into more of a flared fit. And if you use this snap at the bottom, I genuinely don't think it's made to do this, but you can turn these into shorts. They're kind of like shorts or capris. In terms of the fabric, this is highly textured nylon. It has a like scratchy hand feel. They don't have any pockets, but they do have these two invisible side zipper pockets. They're not really that practical, but since these are also waterproof, I'm assuming that those pockets were added so that it would keep water out no matter what. This is my first piece from Aphex Works, but definitely not my last. I can already tell that these pants are gonna get a ton of wear for me this spring and summer. Moving on, we have a pair of denim from Object 22. And if you look at that heel bite, you can already tell I've been wearing these things a lot. It's made out of this like more flowy denim, a more springtime denim. At first I was a little skeptical on like 
how I was gonna react to this type of denim since I'm more of a structured denim type of person. And it's not a light denim by any means, it just has less structure to it. I believe they were enzyme washed, which gives it this like vintage feel and look. These are pretty much just your standard baggy loose fit denim. It features this five button fly tumbled leather back patch and this scar stitching detail on the pocket. I'm a sucker for little things like that. One thing I do not like about these is how small the back pockets are like so here's my card holder it barely fits my card holder if you wanted to put your phone or anything back here it's just not happening but besides the back pocket I really don't have any you know bad things to say about this denim keep up the good work over at object 22 now lastly for the pants we have another piece from Simple Project, and these are their lace trousers, I believe is what they're called on their website, but this, this right here is gonna be my spring summer pant. It's made out of a nylon organza on the outside, but these pants are actually double layered, and I believe that the inside lighting, like the first pant, um, is just 100% cotton, but having that double layer gives these pants a very unique look. If you can see the organza is see-through, like you can see my hand through the sides that the, the pants underneath aren't going through, but these pants feature like this ruffled waistband, some decently long drawstrings. The waistband is actually elastic. It almost feels like boxers. They're so comfortable. They just have your standard side and back pockets, but once you get to the bottom, you can kind of see the double layers, and I currently have it hooked up right now, but there is this pearl that adjusts the organza layer so that you can either make it stop dragging on the ground or just give it a cool effect. Like I said before, it's just little things like this that make me really enjoy clothes. But other than that, they are just a wide, loose fitting trouser. This is probably the best pickup I've had for spring, summer. Now, moving on to tops, we have this sample t-shirt that I made and it is essentially what I would consider to be like the perfect t-shirt. It's made out of this extremely tight knitted cotton, which gives the t-shirts a little bit more structure. It's a pretty standard t-shirt, except for the side seams. If you can see, they curve around the front. Now I have a problem with a lot of my shirts that are shorter in length is where they give you that flared out back, which I absolutely hate. I think that looks terrible. By twisting the side seam and bringing that fabric in, it kind of wraps around your body. It's also very subtle, single stitching on the arms and on the hem. One other thing that I really like about this shirt is it has all invisible seams. So there is no visible stitching except for the single stitch. What I mean by like it wraps around is if you look here at the bottom, this is just on the hanger normally, but you can see that the bottom is much lower than the front and it really gives the shirt more shape than like a traditional style t-shirt. I'm planning to release these tees um, somewhere in the middle of summer, so definitely be on the lookout for that. Next up is another piece from Simple Project. I absolutely loved their spring summer collection, so I just had to pick up a lot of things from them. It's basically just a standard Oxford shirt except for this basket weaved design on the front. It's made of the same nylon organza as the pants, but this is just the organza so it is fully see-through. I am definitely gonna have to wear an undershirt with this. I've never seen anybody do on a shirt like this and I just absolutely love how you can really, it, it just is 3D. Like this effect is so cool. One other small detail are these buttons. They are almost made out of like compostable material. That's what it seems to me. It's like a mix of recycled cardboard that's been pressed or some sort of unfinished wood. That subtle brown just works really well with the white color. The shirt is definitely a little out of my comfort zone. I just felt like I could not pass on this. Now for the next two, we have samples yet again. Um, I just really wanted to test out this fabric. It's made out of this gradient boucle yarn. It didn't really come out exactly how I wanted, but it's pretty much just a chunky, oversized sweater. And I have no plans on releasing this, but I still thought it would be cool to show you guys. The neckline is way too big on this, but I can't lie, this thing is so cozy. Like this is what you put on before you're watching a movie on your couch. Next up is a, another ordinary practice sample. This is an 100% cotton knit sweater. This is a personal for me. I kind of made it for my birthday. I love the color purple. It is made out of this very high gauge knit, so it is a lot chunkier than an average sweater. This sweater features a raglan cut, and it also has fully finished seams on the front and 
on the back. It features a slightly cropped body with elongated sleeves and there is distressing throughout the collar and the bottom hems. One little design detail that I did was make these distressings by the thumb and what that allows you to do with the elongated sleeves is kind of wear it almost like as a half glove. By putting your thumb through the distressing you kind of feel like a ninja. I'm not gonna lie, you kind of feel like a ninja. There's still a lot of changes to be made on this sweater that I'm currently getting done right now, so I will update you guys on any more information that I have about this when it comes closer to that autumn, fall um, release time. Lastly, for the tops is the Object 22 Enzyme Washed Hoodie. This is a pretty standard boxed and cropped hoodie featuring this enzyme wash which gives it that vintage look and feel made out of this extremely heavy French terry. Single stitching on the hood, a button snap on the front, extra paneling underneath the armpit to make it even more box. And lastly, it has this standard kangaroo pocket on the front. I'm gonna be completely honest, I'm not the biggest fan of French terry, but this one is very soft. The material gives it a very structured look. It is way too hot to be wearing this right now. This is like a winter hoodie, if I would say so myself. But when the time comes around, this will be a great piece for the winter. Last but not least, I have two pairs of shoes and I'm going to start off with these Joseph Helen boots. Now the design is extremely similar to Guidi's with that front, that very distinct ripple effect with the leather. These boots are made out of calf leather, feature a fully leather bottom and YKK side zip. The quality on this boot is incredible for the price. I would say this is not a replacement for Guidi. Guidi is really in their own lane with materials and craftsmanship. I think this is an amazing alternative if you don't wanna spend, you know, a thousand dollars on a pair of boots. I really love the wrinkles in the leather. I think it gives it a very unique texture and this is that kind of boot that I feel like over time is just gonna look better and better. At first, I thought they were gonna be extremely uncomfortable, but they did a very nice job of the padding of the insole. They're really not that bad. These boots are also very wide, which is great for my feet. And this round toe cap makes sure that there is a lot of room like for movement, real good boots. Last but not least, we have the Haven X Clark Wallabies. Now, I love Clarks. They are so comfy and these are no different. They're made out of this Gore-Tex suede material, which basically just means that it is fully waterproof. These are almost like hiking Clarks. They feature a little bit more robust lacing and this very aggressive rubber Vibram sole on the bottom. Another thing that is a little bit different from traditional Clarks is they have this like overlock stitching all the way around. The texture on the suede is very unique and I'm not sure if it's because it is a Gore-Tex fabric or not. It has like a very thick piling on the suede and it really does just look more rugged. But that is it for the video. Hope you guys have a good rest of your day wait I have I have a secret pickup and it's these Muji slides these were the only things that I got in uh, New York when I went um, these things are unbelievably comfortable if you have a Muji around you go get some